Joining us now to talk more about the nuclear danger in the quake zone is University of Georgia professor Cham Dallas, a nuclear energy expert. You've been in contact with both the Japanese and the U.S. government throughout this process. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, let's first show the people at home an animation of a nuclear reactor so they can exactly see how this is supposed to work. So let's talk about that first. How should things be working? Well, here's your reactor right here, and these are the control, these are the fuel rods right here, radioactive uh, fuel rods, uranium, that have generate neutrons that uh, heat up water. The water comes over here to the turbine, turns into steam, electricity goes out to the public. Now, here is the key. Uh, they had control rods that they dropped down into the reactor that shut it off. Uh, at the very beginning of the reaction. And that's exactly what happened with the earthquake, the subsequent, subsequent tsunami. That's Let's right. talk about Fukushima right now and where they stand at this moment because we're hearing of multiple explosions, things of that nature, possible radiation exposure. What's the situation there now? Well, first let's talk about what went right. Like I was saying, they, they dropped these control rods. They, the control rods came down into here and shut the reaction off. They did that in 11 nuclear reactors. Now. Uh, now, they shut it off, and uh, it is still very hot, though. There's a lot of heat. Remember, the heat is what generates the electricity, and that's where the problem comes in. Um, the, uh, you have to keep water around this reactor all the time. In your stove, you have a stove at the house, you turn it off, the heat, you know, it takes a while for it to cool down. It takes a nuclear reactor days to cool down, and if you don't keep water generating around that, it won't stay patent. And that's why we're talking about partial meltdowns right now because of the heat around these rods. So now what they've done is they've brought in seawater to try, it's a last ditch effort to try to cool these rods down, correct? Yes, that's, uh, that was the last ditch effort for them. Uh, once the reactor uh, was shut down, the problem is, is there was no electricity. And so you had to keep water generating around there. The backup systems failed and they started to melt, probably from the top. Not a total meltdown like Chernobyl. That's yep. what you just saw, okay, what would so happen Chernobyl. Was Chernobyl. A total meltdown, right. That was a total meltdown. Almost certainly what happened here was a partial meltdown, just from the top, where, like a candle, a candle burns from the top yep. and it stops. Well, uh, we're hoping that's what happened here. As far as uh, continued explosions, now this, these were not radiation explosions, correct? Let's make that clear. That's right. The explosions, there's two of them now, were not radiation explosions, but gas explosions. When they threw all that salt water in there, it was kind of a Hail Mary pass, yep. last ditch effort. Uh, they built up hydrogen up in the top of this dome and it detonated in two of the reactions blew the tops off. Let's talk about radiation exposure like we saw in Celia Hatton's piece a second ago, the USS Ronald Reagan, 100 miles offshore. They've detected some exposure. They've moved their, their assets and their troops farther away. How about the people in the evacuation zone with close proximity to this reactor? Well, there's some disconnects here. We're being told by the Japanese government that the radiation levels were very low or relatively low, detectable, but still low around yeah. the reactor. We have reports of people with radiation sickness. That's a disconnect. Usually it takes a few days for radiation, especially at lower levels, to yeah. show up. We have an aircraft carrier veering off. There's some kind of disconnect here between the information. I believe that the aircraft carrier knows what they're doing. This is a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, but we're not getting some facts straight yet. And that is very common here, uh, you know, after uh, Three Mile Island, after yeah. Chernobyl. Lots of crazy stories in these first few days. It keeps it very exciting. All right, Professor, stay with us. We're going to talk with you a little later on the broadcast. Professor Cham Dallas, thank you.